So I just want to point this out. This is the way I like to paint. Like I don't like to use pin washes to pick up, pick out all my engraving. Like there's been a lot of engraving, all this grain, the nail holes, everything on this whole deck. Now you're going to see it darker where I want to really get the rails and the ties inside. That's where I spend all my emphasis right now. You can see where I'm picking off these nail holes here, but I'll go over these these uh, plank lines or engravings later, but not as heavy. I prefer to black them out first if I can use the term black, but it's not really black, it's umber. Because when I lay on the, like I want to go from dark to light, if I black it out first, then I get a more defined line in the planks and in the grain and nail holes and rivets, whatever, right? It just pops better than if you try to just paint it like light wood colors and then throw wash as a pin wash. The problem is the pin wash leaves a residue of filter over top of the plank, the high side of the plank. So it darkens the whole thing and I don't want to be fighting that. You know, I want to take it, render it dark first and then work light planks out of it. And uh, I'll be doing that as I mask off areas and then paint different shades of planks. And then I'll always have the dark and grave line to chase later, but at least it'll already have a base of dark umber. Okay, how's everybody doing? So as you can see, I've uh, started to paint the deck on the barge slip. I'm well into it now. And I want to talk just a little bit about that at this stage and then show you a short clip on how I apply this, this paint over this base color of raw umber. Like you can see the plank effect that I'm getting. This isn't finished yet. I'll probably put a wash on this later after I seal it. Um, maybe a little bit of dry brushing maybe not i tend to shy away from dry brushing when it comes to ho scale because it can be too much sometimes but that depends on the individual okay so as most of you may or may not know from the construction videos is this, this is all plastic now you can do this in wood and it looks stunning believe me or you can do it in plastic which you can engrave as well which i've done right uh, as you can see uh, 
the challenge to paint is greater obviously because wood already works for you but that's one of the reasons why I like to work in plastic one is uh, because it always challenges me to paint like to, to become a better painter and to try new methods and styles uh, uh, to the paint application okay and I think you can achieve just as an effective a look uh, as wood with plastic as you can if you use real wood. I've been there in the past. I've laid tens of thousands of wooden planks and nail holes and built many a ships, period ships, so I know all about it. Uh, I'm just not into that game anymore. I'm just into modeling, which comes easy to me now, and I love working with plastic. It's just a wonderful medium to model in, and you can achieve any surface or texture with plastic if you put your mind to it. So what I did with this was is I basically painted the whole deck with raw umber, which is again is uh, flat black and a type of red brown of your choice by to me. It really doesn't matter. You can see there's a bit of red in here like as I come back, you know, with the airbrush, it's very thin. I would say probably 60% IPA, 40% uh, pigment or paint, and I come back and go in when I want it darker, I stay longer. If I want it more red, I I come away or I pass over it faster and then I added a little extra black in here it came back and I just stabbed in where all the butt joints on the planks were in the nail holes I really like that it has a little bit of a you know the old style creosote kind of planks but now everything's sort of more uh, pressure treated so they have a gray tone so I've been working this section over with different variations of grays and I'm not using any masking tape you can mask and that looks good too right like mask off with pin line tape. It's a very laborious task, but it can be quite striking as well. But uh, when you thin your paint down as much as I do, in this case, 5% pigment, maybe 10, 90% IPA, you can cut a pin line with an airbrush and you can support your hand and you can, and even if there is a little bit of overspray on individual planks, you can uh, blend that away with an oil wash at the end. You can put oil right onto Tamiya within an hour. Within one hour you can put oil paint and it won't touch the Tamiya, which is another reason why I like Tamiya paint in combination with Windsor Newton high quality oils, okay? Or Humbrils. You can mix these with Humbrol paints as well. Uh, if you still like to use Humbrils, which I think are excellent, probably the best enamel pigments in the world for the hobbyist are by Humbrol. But anyway, uh, I use all acrylic now, and since I'm on the paint topic, I'll show you the four colors that I use for this plank work over top of this. So I go to Flat Flesh XF15. Yes, that's right, flesh for planks. Very thin, makes them pop. Uh, I use Deck 10 XF55. Okay, it's got an earthy sort of tone to it. Okay. Then this is a, a, a gray green, uh, Imperial Japanese Navy gray green. Okay, I really like this color. And uh, I also like um, JN green, which is very similar, like even lighter than this, but more gray. Okay. This lends more towards a pressure treated plank look. And then, of course, buff, good old buff, you know, another earthy tone, XF57. And I like that as well. And like, what I do is, is I thin it down super thin. Like, see how thin that is? Like the glass clears almost right away. That is one of the advantages of an airbrush, okay? And they're just like riding a bike. Remember when you first jumped on your bicycle and you were wobbly and, and you fell over and then you got back on it again and before you knew it, it was all muscle memory, right? You didn't think about pedaling the bike or steering it. Just your mind said where you wanted to go and everything followed. It's the same way with an airbrush and the learning curve is very short if you devote the time to this and this will explode your skill level and, and painting ability if you learn to use an airbrush okay put invest the time and you'll never regret it anyway so what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to zoom in closer here and I'm going to show you how I cut in these planks and I just all I do is I go by feel I just change up the colors when I like I'll do with one color a bunch of random planks come back with another color and another color then I'll come back uh, with some of this and, and cut in some more planks and just take my time set it up like a canvas and just have fun okay
Okay, so at this point you have a little piece of cardboard on the side so you can just spray your airbrush onto it, get the paint flowing, get the, the tip lubed up nice, and then come on to the model. And look how little I have in there. See that? The 5% pigment, 95% IPA, and this will cover this whole area. Like, this is where you really get the economy in your paint, okay, that I talked about, okay? So we'll just start picking out individual planks. Bring the air on with no paint and just tiny squeeze. Pull back on the trigger just so you get into the zone and the feel. Don't worry about a little bit of overspray. Stay a bit longer in one area. Use your airbrush like a pencil. Like just pretend it's a pencil and you're making it darker by rubbing it back and forth with a little bit of paint, see? And if you want to shoot more IPA, like flood a bit in, and it reactivates the umber underneath them, great. See here the IPA like it's changing up a bit and it's coming out with less pigment and it's sort of reactivating some of the umber and a bit of red's coming through. That's good. That's what you want. Let the anomalies of your paint or mixture work for you in this case. And just as you get into it, like once you get into it after a few minutes, uh, you'll get into a groove and a zone. And you'll really start to have fun and you'll get better lines, you'll get new discoveries will come. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do is just cut in a few lines or planks like this. And I'm not going to worry about little overspray onto other planks because it'll do its own thing and that's what you want right you want that randomness but you know I've used the amount of paint here that you can't even measure look it's five percent look at still I had a little eyedropper of it right and I'm still got plenty in there okay and then once you're done with that then try the this at five percent with uh, 95 percent IPA and just cut in like go really thin first and if you don't have any color then just add a little bit of paint always start with really really high IPA content and it's a good chance that uh, you'll have too much pigment at first because it'll just become too opaque for you but uh, you can get the idea now right and then later you can seal this if you want you don't even have to if you want to put a wash on this like if you want to lay to just blend all that in and sort of subdue some of that just take a thin wash of raw umber. Uh, you can even lay raw umber on fairly heavy and then wipe it off with a rag. Okay? Or you can just put a wash with solvent and just like a pin wash and uh, it'll it'll knock this down and create that continuity that I talked about where all the colors blend and work together. Okay? Okay, so as I mentioned, a little bit of rust can go a long ways. This is one of my favorite rust base colors. This is thinned like 10 to 15% pigment, 85% IPA, XF79 linoleum deck brown. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to use it to cut in just a tiny spot where the nail holes are just to give it a little bit of a rust pop. Like I want to add a little bit of my own style to this like I'm not trying to copy exactly the tone and color of the deck there are pictures of the deck looks dark there are pictures where it looks bleached out from the sun and I but I want more variance and that's the beauty of building and painting a model to your preference and your style and then I'm going to enhance some little thin rust like in where the uh, metal touches the wood 
in here and then in the rails of the track and then at the very end i'll take a little bit more of a more of a lighter a little more orange and a little white to this rust more of a fresh kind of rust okay So when you're laying this rust on, you might not be able to see it as well on the camera, but it's so thin that it looks sort of wet as it's going on. But when it dries, it just it's a beautiful blend and a subtle rust hint there. And that's what you want to be careful. One of the biggest mistakes that that uh, painters make, including myself, is I overdo the rust. And you know, oftentimes older rust, okay, is going to be very dark, even like this plate here. That's what old rust looks like. Um, a very orangey type rust is usually really fresh. It means that the metal's been rubbed raw and then rain and then a week goes by or so in it, or even overnight. So that's again subjective to the painter or the modeler. So I, I like a little bit of this darker color. I'm going to lighten some of this plate work up and then just uh, enhance the rails a bit where the rust is and then I'm probably going to seal it. Because at some point you have to walk away. Like, I could keep working planks, different shades, but, you know, it really looks great now, pretty much. So I'll seal this, I'll flat coat this with Vallejo uh, flat varnish. And then I'll just clean the top of the rail with a eraser or a piece of wood. But I'm going to leave this, uh, un like, I'm not going to clean the top of the rail here. I want it to look like the prototype. So there's no raw rail, except maybe a little bit at the center rail where they only use the center piece mostly, okay? Okay, so um, I didn't show this part, but just a little bit of blue paint, but I just masked this off. Like the end of this barge ramp uh, varies, like in terms of uh, what's going on here. If I look at earlier photos, they had a blue sort of type of no skid, what some would call battleship linoleum. It's this type of, well, they used it on decks on ships, like in, uh, near the end of World War II, but. Um, so this would be like a no skid uh, type of material here and I, I noticed uh, late photos like newer ones of this period now it's all white but the earlier one around 2010 was blue so that's why I painted it blue and what I did was I just took some flat sky blue or actually this is just not flat it's actually uh, gloss but um, I added 50% flat really light gray or, or white it doesn't matter but I want to encourage you make sure you add white like a lot of white to your colors like reds yellows and blues like you want to tone them down because the stock color is just it, it's just too too bright you know and um, I find that if you tone it down it looks more realistic and then if you put washes on it and stuff then it all begins to work together and if you want to dry brush with the actual stock color later or just flood in some then it just works better it just has more depth to it but you can never go wrong if you lighten the blue. You can see the cap there. And then you can see how much more lighter I made it there. So it's somewhere in between this and this once it was laid on the darker color. Okay. So this part I just wanted to get done because I'm going to seal it pretty soon. And But I'm going to add a little bit of uh, 
rust on this area here before I do. Too long. 